You gotta check this out. Here, I have a soda can, but the back side, oh my goodness. Acids and bases. If you are planning to spend any time in the chemistry lab, you're definitely gonna come across these terms pretty soon. And not only because they are important for many chemical experiments, they're also important to know about for many safety reasons. And that's what we're gonna take a look at today. <laughs> but first, let's go over what acids and bases really are. We come in contact with them every day. Sour cream tastes a little sour because it contains lactic acid. Lemons are sour because of citric acid. And the chemical opposite to an acid is a base. Soap and washing detergent are two examples of basic substances. The short definition is that acids are substances that can give off hydrogen ions in a solution with water. And the higher the concentration of hydrogen ions, the more acidic the solution is. A base can instead take up hydrogen ions. In a solution with water, the hydrogen can be taken from the water molecules, leaving negative hydroxide ions in the solution. The higher the concentration of hydroxide ions, the stronger the base. So the concentration of different acids and bases can vary, and to know how strong they are, we use a pH scale, which goes from 0 to 14. Distilled water is neutral and right in the middle at pH 7. Under 7 and the solution is acidic, and over 7, the solution is basic. It is these ions, hydrogen ions for acids and hydroxide ions for bases, that give these solutions some interesting properties. The thing is that both acids and bases can be highly corrosive. And now, since we're here at the labs at Chalmers University of Technology, we have a great chance to show you exactly what happens. Metals in combination with these solutions is not always a good idea. All right, so we're gonna start with this. This is an aluminum can, and we're gonna put it in hydrochloric acid and see what happens. It takes a few seconds for the hydrochloric acid to get through the protective coating and layer of paint that covers the outside of the can. But after that, the reaction goes faster. Here we go. <laughs> okay, let's look at what we have here. This is the coolest part. What we can see here is that the acid has eaten away all of the aluminium, but what we can see is the plastic coating that is lining the can from the inside, which is pretty much unaffected by the acid. Really awesome. We did the same setup with sodium hydroxide, a strong base, but got a much weaker reaction. But don't let this make you believe that sodium hydroxide isn't as reactive. We think it had a lot to do with the can and not necessarily the sodium hydroxide. And why do we think that? Well, we did the same experiment with regular aluminium foil as well. The balanced reaction looks like this. In sodium hydroxide, the aluminium binds to sodium and oxygen to form sodium aluminium dioxide and hydrogen gas. In hydrochloric acid, we form aluminium chloride and just like in the other reaction, hydrogen gas. And just to show that it is hydrogen gas being produced in this reaction, I brought some soap bubble mix. Hydrogen gas is, as you may know, really flammable and with some soap bubbles, we can test it.
As you can see, strong acids and bases can create some really strong reactions. And I think it's pretty obvious, but I still have to say it. We have to be really careful when handling these solutions. And this is why we have a lot of this safety equipment on glasses, the lab coat, gloves, that kind of stuff. But what's also really interesting is that we are all carrying with us uh, concentrated acid all the time. We have hydrochloric acid in our stomachs that it helps us break down the food that we eat. And you are never supposed to bring food into a lab, but today I'm gonna make an exception. Uh, and no, I'm not gonna eat this one. You could say that our experiment here is set up to help visualize two things. First, how the hydrochloric acid we have in our stomachs help us break down the food that we eat. And second, how these strong acids and bases behave when they come in contact with organic material. Okay, so this is a process that takes a bit of time. So now we just wait. Oh, that looks gross. <laughs> Both acids and bases can clearly easily react with organic material, but even if it looks rather disgusting here, it is worth pointing out that both acids and bases are commonly used in cooking. Marinades, for example, often have vinegar or citric acids for flavor and texture. And baking soda, which is basic, is used in, well, baking. But with that said, these usually have much weaker concentrations than what we used for our burger experiment. So here we have a strong acid and a strong base, kind of opposite side of the scale on the pH scale. Uh, but we can still see that both of them are extremely efficient when it comes to breaking down organic matter, as you can see. So again, I just want to emphasize, <laughs> be really careful when you're handling these solutions. If you want to get any of these solutions on your skin, or other harmful chemicals too for that matter, make sure to quickly rinse thoroughly with water. To sum things up, acids and bases, these are chemicals that we come in contact with every day, from cooking to cleaning, even to exercise, and not to forget all of the chemical experiments that we do here in the lab. Just remember to be careful when you're handling these chemicals and remember all of the safety precautions and safety equipment that we have available before you get started, just in case something goes wrong. Thanks everyone for watching today.